Let me make some very brief uh, remarks, not only about the postdoc program, but also about the research program, as Dr. Dietrich already started to do. First of all, I would like to mention that actually my institution, DFK, the German Research Center for AI and XU, were established in the same year. Actually, some of the same people were behind uh, it. Professor Schipersky, which we heard talking, uh, at that time CEO of Mannesmanns Kinsle, was one of our founding members, both of XE, as we heard, and DFKI. And Professor Schwarzel, also from Siemens, was on the board of XE and also was one of our founders. So uh, both played a key role in founding XE and DFKI. And just two weeks ago, we had the 20th anniversary of DFKI with a large uh, celebration. And actually, we share a lot of uh, the uh, common interest uh, at uh, both institutions. We do a lot of work in AI, of course. Multimodal dialogue recently, uh, uh, ICSI also joined with Trevor Darrell. And I think there are large, uh, very good opportunities in the future. And of course, uh, speech. And in the rocky times where uh, the funding for the postdoc pro program uh, um, uh, had some cutbacks, we survived by having very large collaborative research projects, which had a big impact uh, on uh, German industry and I think also gave a lot of experience back to ICSI. That was from 1990 to 2003. We had the very successful uh, program on multimodal dialogue in the car. Yesterday and the day before, we saw the results now being deployed at BMW cars, uh, Mercedes cars and so on. This was a big success. More than 60 patents uh, uh, emerged from this research and a lot also of uh, excellent new companies were founded. Smart Web was a follow-up project. This dealt with mobile speech-based access to the semantic web, again funded by BMBF. And currently, we work together in the Army Consortium, headed by uh, Avi Bula. DFK is also part. This is about augmented multi-party interaction, and it's funded by the European Commission. We also had some small uh, joint contract research programs with the German industry. Very successful was a project sponsored by Deutsche Telekom, SBC, speech-based classification of the age and gender of speakers. This, by the way, is now deployed all over Germany. Uh, you can, uh, when you uh, call the German Telekom, your voice will be classified according to age and uh, gender. Automatically, we won the best innovation uh, award with this system uh, two years ago. A uh, second um, project is a speech overlapped acoustic event detection for automotive applications sponsored by VW EIL here in uh, Palo Alto. Uh, I think I just wanted to mention that I think the complexity of the speech understanding system uh, problem, not only speech recognition, is still fascinating because a lot of the uh, things which are done here at Berkeley, for instance, reasoning under uncertainty, excellent group by, by Stuart Russell, machine learning, vision, problem solving, knowledge representation, action planning, all come together to really have an ultimate speech understanding system. It's not only you know, the speech recognition research, but as we say in AI, the problem of speech understanding is AI complete. And this means that there are still a lot of open problems. But let me point out, when we started this uh, research on uh, uh, human uh, language technology, uh, many uh, people, including some people even at the ministry, uh, believe this is a very esoteric area. Yeah? Uh, but now it's a multi-billion euro market with a total revenue just last year of more than 2 billion euro just for spoken dialogue systems. Actually, in Germany, we have now 120 new companies uh, building systems uh, for uh, human language technology from automatic call centers, email response systems, uh, human machine interaction in the cars, which is a specialty in Germany, and tax mining. So it really went from this very esoteric uh, basic research also to something which really impacts uh, our industry. 
Now we could say, why shouldn't we stop then? I think there are still many open problems, and this is my perspective uh, for, for the future, for the next 20 years. I think the problem of integrating top-down context knowledge, when I started, I always said, yeah, you should do this, but it's not yet solved to bring this top-down context knowledge into low-level speech recognition? What about exploiting more knowledge about the human communication strategies, including, and this was a specialty here also of, of um, uh, Jerry, uh, psycho and neurolinguistic inspirations, at least. Uh, to, uh, this is still uh, an open issue. And last but not least, I think uh, right now, <laughs> most of the speech understanding text mining is all based on, on data collection, but this is very expensive on the one hand side, you want to avoid it, and cognitively unrealistic. Human beings can learn languages which with less data, less annotated data, and we have to find out to have a kind of bootstrapping process uh, in the future to make um, these systems even uh, much faster in their learning capacity. Thank you very much for your attention.